You're listening to kick off on Talksport with Hugh Wisencroft and the former England defender Danny Mills. Of course, we are talking about the European Super League tonight. So much news coming in from so many different areas. But our question: Should the Super League happen? And if it does, is football dead? And really, we want to throw things forward because there is the question: How do we save football? What concessions need to be made next? And by who will be speaking to fans? Finance specialists, European football experts will ask you what's next for English football as well. This is kickoff. Remember to get in touch. You can give us a call 08717 You can text 81089, tweet at Talksport KO as well. As we speak, Danny Mills and I are looking up at pictures of hundreds of fans outside Stamford Bridge before Chelsea's game against Brighton, uh, protesting, very angry about the proposed involvement of their club in the European Super League. But as you've heard, TalkSport understands that Chelsea are now preparing documentation to request their withdrawal from the European Super League. It didn't take long, Danny Mills, for some clubs to go scamper him. Fan pressure is absolutely massive. I've, I've not seen any reaction yet where anybody likes the idea. Apart from, <laughs> apart from the six owners of those football clubs that clearly signed up to it in the first place, I've not found anybody that's looking forward to it or wants it to happen. I don't think the, I don't think the country's ever been this unified. <laughs> I, I really, I really not, well, no, certainly not in my lifetime. It's a culture shock. Well, there's there's always there's always been a divide. There's always been a debate about something. I think this is the first time whether whether you're a politician, whether you wherever you work, whatever job you do, everybody seems to be unified in not wanting this to happen. Do you know what? It's one of those things where I think the last forty eight hours or so was just a lesson in capitalism for everyone. Now, anyone that thought that believed that football was still this sort of, you know, sacred entity. It, it, you know, it's been driven by money and capitalism along with virtually every sector that we have for decades. The, the, the most, I think the most ridiculous statement that I have heard, um, I think, was it Florentino Perez came out and said, this is for the good of the game. We need to move forward because we've lost a load of money and we can't afford it. That's nothing to do with anything else apart from you've mismanaged your football club. You've borrowed too much. You've spent too much. You've bought players for huge uh, transfer fees, paid them way too much, and you're now in massive debt. That's nothing to do with it apart from bad management. Don't start blaming everybody else and, and get everybody else to dig you out of a hole. The only thing that I would say about this is I think it was a clear message to clubs in the Premier League the other 14 outside of the six and to clubs across Europe, really, that there is a power base in those oh, but, clubs. But, but there's always been a power base and no, this has been muted for years. I think football fans and a lot of other clubs believe that, that even those fans cared about the traditions of the game. We have to look at the competitions, the Premier League, the Champions League as well, and see that these clubs are the big draw. And they, have, they know that. They know that they're the big draw. But they always have been. I know, but... They haven't always had the power base in terms of votes, in terms of how the league should be run, and they haven't had a bigger share, really, apart from prize money, in terms of the distribution of wealth. Yeah, they've made more money because they've been winning things. We know prize money's there. Of course, there's more on merchandise and branding, etc., player sales. But the reality of the situation is, simply on rights being sold, for example, they want more. And in many but ways, if it's, if it's in many all... ways, with a business cap on, they do deserve more. OK, then stop, pay, stop paying your players ludicrous wages. Put a wage cap in there and say but that's every, all we're going to play. Which, which club doesn't pay their players ludicrous wages? But it, why, why just stop it then? If you want to make more money, get better coaches in, develop more younger players, and Manchester United, you don't have to give... Greenwood's not going to leave at the moment. He's signed a, he's a five-year contract. All these things. There are much better ways of doing what they've done. They don't have to pay players 250 grand a week. Get a different player. And if those top six clubs all take that stance and go, right, the maximum we're going to pay is 100 grand, what are the players going to do? Right, another club's going to play, pay those players what they, they get paid. But are they? Yeah. You can only have 25 players. Yeah, but if it, if it wasn't Arsenal, it would be Tottenham. <laughs> but, but soon, if it but wasn't soon, Tottenham, it would be Manchester or, City. Sooner or, sooner or later, you run out of teams for those players to go to, so they have nowhere to go. We 
are celebrating here on TalkSport this evening. This is kickoff with Hugh Wisencroft and the former England defender Danny Mill. No, we're not celebrating because Watford have taken the lead against Norwich over on TalkSport 2 right now. We are celebrating because Chelsea and Manchester City look like they will be going back and leaving the idea of a European Super League. And we know the other big clubs in England are going to follow. You, the fans, you have won. Your voice has been heard. 08717 How are you feeling about this? If your club hasn't yet declared that they will be leaving, do you want to hear that news as soon as possible? You have won. 08717 You have to be delighted at the idea of a European Super League being thrown out the window. It was an awful idea from start to finish, but it is your voice, it is your complaints, it's those Chelsea fans outside of Stamford Bridge right now protesting. The Leeds players with their shirts last night, the Brighton players with theirs tonight. 